As a new software engineer, do you know what is continuous integration, continuous delivery, what is a dependency injection, what is A-B testing? There are a lot of terms used in software engineering. I've compiled a list of 16 such terms that every engineer should understand. While they are still like a Google search away, but I've gone a step further and made them super simple to understand for you. Here we go. Let's start with a very few simple ones. First one, product roadmap. As it's very clear from the name itself, it's the roadmap of the product. What's the current state of the product, where it's headed, what it's gonna be in the next six months, a year, two years, and so on. This is generally prepared by the product managers and is regarded as a stepping stone to the software project. Second, PRD. It's known as a product requirement document. It's again prepared by a product manager, but here we talk about things in detail. What is the feature? How will the UI UX look like? What are the core user journeys? A success metrics, failure, metrics and so on and so forth and third project plan this is where things start to get technical and this is generally prepared by the tech lead or the software engineer who is working on the project so this contains information like what are the key deliverables what milestones they fall under who are the key stakeholders for the project are there any dependencies on other themes all the documents uh, mailing lists etc design doc so this is the ultimate technical doc where things get very technical. It's written by engineers meant to be consumed by engineers and in some cases PMs as well. Here is where we finally talk about uh, the software design. We have ER diagrams, sequence diagrams, HLDs, uh, pros and cons of various alternatives, test plan and all the technical stuff that you can think of. All right, let's switch gears and move to slightly advanced terms. Dependency injection. This term sounds magical, it's super heavy. I'll make it super simple for you. If you define a class which takes some other class as a constructor parameter, which means that this uh, class A depends upon class B and this act is called dependency injection. Some people might confuse it with composition but uh, that is for some other video some other time. Sixth, test doubles. A test double in its simple form is just a fake class or a fake method. In other words, it is a function or method that can stand in for a real implementation in a test. A very classic example is, so you have a class A that uses class B to fetch data from the server. Let's call class B like a service or something. Now when writing unit tests for class A, you wouldn't be using class B because it makes no sense to bombard the server in a test, which means that you'll have to fake this class B and that fake is known as a testable. Now there are a lot of benefits of faking over mocking, but that is for some other video. Seventh, deprecation. So super simple and literal if some piece of code is deprecated, it is done, it, is, uh, it won't be supported and maintained in the future. So why did this term even make the cut? Because it is super hard, especially if you own a library which is used by a lot of different teams at your company. It will become super hard to deprecate it because hey, you need to provide an alternative and then participate in this never ending cycle of upgrading the clients to the alternative. So all SWEs here who maintain legacy libraries will understand how painful this is. Then eighth, A-B testing. So A-B testing is a software experimentation strategy. Let's understand this with an example. If a feature can have three different UI UX, the, uh, the engineer sometimes pack all these features into the product uh, and use server-side config to enable them selectively only for a fraction of users. So this helps to see if one UI UX is behaving better than others. And if this is the case, that particular version is enabled for the entire user base. QA. Okay, it's a term used for assuring the quality of the software. We have QA teams who either do like manual QA, some form testing, or create automation scripts to test the software at scale. Okay, 10th, continuous integration. So CI is a software development practice of integrating work frequently. In other words, when code sent by every engineer is verified by automated static analyzers, is automatically built and tested before, and sometimes after merging it to the repository is automatically released to the public. This entire process is called continuous integration. So it helps to avoid merging changes that can break the build and just streamlines the entire life cycle. So continuous build, it's kind of a sub part of CI, but it comprises just the, uh, like the build and testing part of it. Twelfth, continuous delivery. Again, a sub part of CI, but comprises just the automated release part of it. Okay, some theoretical terms. Thirteenth, infrastructure as a service. IAS, I guess, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. In this, the developers get full control over their server architecture, where they pay as per the resources they use. So they can add remove machines to their cloud, expand or compress storage, and stuff like that. AWS is a very classic example of um, IAS. We also have Google Compute Engine and Microsoft Azure as well. Then 14th, pass. 
platform as a service. Here things are a little bit easier where developers have some control over the OS level resources and developer tools used to build the server. Google App Engine is a very classic example. Firebase, okay, sometimes it's referred to as BAS or backend as a service where almost all the layers have been abstracted and you only write the endpoints you as in developers or, or just directly manipulate the db from the clients which is a bit interesting aws also has a few pass offerings microsoft has heroku let's jump to lightweight terms again front end and back end well i personally just stopped using these terms i think that client and server is a better terminology because the next thing you know a server can be a client for another server and that is actually what happens in microservices architecture. Another thing is a client may or may not have a UI. So let's say you are an engineer who's working on, on the Alexa or Google Home client. Will you call yourself a front-end engineer? Okay, the last term for today, which is the most difficult to understand. I'm pretty sure you cannot guess it. Weekend. <laughs> a weekend. It's very simple. A weekend doesn't mean a weekday. I have to remind this myself every now and then. So I will leave you with this thought. Mr. Nawal Ravikant has a philosophy for work that describes working like a tiger and not a cow. What does that mean? So cows graze all day, slow pace, same activity day in and day out. But tigers hunt once, full intensity and relax in their remaining time. So uh, be a tiger so that you know what weekends are. It has a deep meaning. <sighs> okay, okay, I can still go on, but I think this should be enough for today. I haven't even touched the surface of these terms as in these are the topics that may require a book to cover like each of them. The major references for this video are my experience and this book called Software Engineering at Google. I just finished this book like a month back, probably like one of the best software engineering resources available out there in the market. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description below. As always, like, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Bye.